John to Jesus, Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant, Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great trials, of famine, darkness, and sword. So we are a voice in the desert, crying, prepare the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. And the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion still salvation. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant, David, rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, your fields are as wide as the world. And we the labors in your many earth you carry the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and now the Zion still salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Out of Zion still salvation comes. Come. Behold, behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Out of Zion still salvation comes. Lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Amen. You can be seated. Glad to see everybody this morning. I just wanted to welcome everybody on Facebook and YouTube. I hear the whistles about my suit. I appreciate that very much. Whoever that is, thank you. Yes, it is Pastor Appreciation Day. You get a day for me to dress up just like my mom does. It's Mother's Day. So, um, so there you go. Don't ask me to do it again, please. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right. Thank You're you. making us look bad, Dave. I can't wait to put my hat back on. Uh, so, like I said, we just wanted to welcome everybody on Facebook and YouTube, everybody here. It is Pastor Appreciation Day. Uh, we're excited to, to honor Pastor and his family. Um, just want to talk about uh, the ways to give tithes. Uh, we have online giving. You can go to our website, or we are on the Church Central app. You can find our church, find Freedom Fellowship on there. You can donate through that. We also have a P.O. Box that you can send it to. It's P.O. Box 302, and that's Radford, Virginia, 24141. So... 
Where are you going? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. I ain't going to protect you. So just remember that. Those are our ways to give. Um, and something else we like to do here, we, uh, we are a big family, so we like to celebrate things together. And I'm just making sure he doesn't take off running somewhere. So uh, first thing we're going to do is anniversaries. Do we have any anniversaries the past week? Any anniversaries? No anniversaries. Okay. We know we have one birthday to celebrate. Did anybody else have a birthday? Hey, man, come on now. Take my eyes off of you for two seconds. Shut the door. Do yes. we have any birthdays this past week? Anybody? <laughs> oh, wow. Was that when you were drowning me in a river? <laughs> so as you can tell, we have one We have one birthday that we know of. And all the heartache that you give everybody else, I think you need to come up here and stand so we can sing to you. <laughs> so, it's pretty neat. It's Pastor Appreciation Day. He just had a birthday. What'd you turn? You don't look a day over 80. <laughs> Woo! I. <laughs> What does the Bible say about gray hair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's sing happy birthday to Pastor. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Five looks good on you. It's okay. <laughs> so um, I'm going to turn it over to Todd right now. Um, he's got some announcements that he would like to make. And so I'm going to let Todd come up here. All right. Good morning.
sorry about that. <laughs> I had to get them all together. Um, we just want to say from Children's Church, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you all so much for your support. Anything and everything I come to them to do, they're all for it. And not only are they all for it, they support us by being here for them, by being with the kids, by loving the kids. And we thank you so very much from the bottom of our hearts. Now, Gavin has a poem he wants to read for the pastor. Hold on. Thank you, Pastor, for all you do, for your work, your kindness, and guidance, too. You point to Jesus. He walked the walk. We usually listen to you when you talk. We thank you're special. We thank you're great. And we will pray for you every day. Well, almost every day. Now, really, Pastor, we've got your back. Now we'll cut you a little slack. We truly think that you're the best, and thank you for all that you do. We love you, old man. Bye, the way. <laughs> <laughs> to beat Tennessee again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now uh, Beth has something she wants to read for Michelle. It takes it takes a special person to be a pastor's wife, for it is not an easy task or a simple way of life. The phone often rings at dinner time. Vacations, they are few. With so many needs in our church, there is always lots to do. When people need a helping hand on you, they can depend. For you always try to do your best to be a faithful friend. So keep this in a special place so you will always know you are a special gift from God who is appreciated so. Thank you, Pastor, for your prayer. Thank you for your advice, Lord, for all your advice. Thank you for your service to our church. your time you give to us. Thank you for your open heart. And Mason, hold this up. I hold it up for Mason. And thank you for all the reasons and a whole all these reasons and a whole lot more. We love you. All right, and now I'm going to not forget to dismiss Children's Church at this time. So, kids, y'all go downstairs. Now we're going to get back into worship with Jim. I don't know where Pastor ran off to. I didn't really have anything prepared, to be completely honest, but I couldn't have said it any better than Kathy and the kids just did. He 
it, you know, it, Pastor's just always kind of been there for us, and, and anything that we've come to him with, he's usually gung-ho for it. He was willing to chip in with his own ideas, and honestly, he gives me about half the songs that we do anyway. I'll have like a five or six new songs on the list to get ready to do, and he'll be like, hey, can you learn this new one? I'm like, yeah, I'll put that one at the top of it. So I, I have a lot of new songs on the way. We're just kind of chipping our way through his list first. <laughs> Y'all stand. Let's finish worship together. To worship the mighty God, and we have come to lift up a joyful song. Let us praise the King, let us praise the King of glory. We will respond to love and mercy He has shown us. We will respond to all the great things He has done. Let us praise the King, let us praise the King of glory. Here in this moment, here in our lives, now and forever, be glorified. Holy, holy Lord Almighty, all the earth is praising your name. Your name. With faithful hearts, we enter in the presence of a faithful God, the Father of an endless love. Let us praise the King, let us praise the King of glory. Here in this moment, here in our lives, now and forever, be glorified. Holy, holy Lord Almighty, all the earth is praising your name. Holy, holy God of glory, open up the heavens. As we bless your name You are worthy You are worthy You are worthy Of all our praise You are holy You are holy God of glory bless your name. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of all our grace. You are holy. You are holy. God of glory, we bless your name.
Nothing can separate Even if I ran away Your love never fails I know I still make mistakes But you have new mercies for me every day And your love never fails You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes Maybe pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me the wind is strong and the water's deep And I'm not alone here on these open seas And your love never fails is far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side But your love never fails You stay the same You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night but joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me And your love never fails Sing that out. Yes, you make all things work together for my good. Yes. You make all things work together for my good. Come on, you make. Yes, you make all things work together for my good. You stay the same. You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me and your love never fails No, your love never fails You make all things work together for my good You make all things Work together for my good.
Hear the word roaring in his thunder with a new future to tell. For the dry season is over, there is a cloud beginning to swell. To the skies, heavy with blessing, lift your eyes, offer your heart. Jesus Christ, open the heavens, now we receive the Spirit of God. We receive the anything else. situation in your circumstance right now whatever it is you may be facing today I want you to know that the heavens are being opened the heavens are being opened on your behalf today on our behalf today on behalf of this nation today God is raining out his glory and his presence upon the earth and I just I just sense in my spirit this morning that there's somebody that you're facing something that you seem it to be in, insurmountable and it's so much larger than what you feel like your faith is right now but I want to tell you right now that the heavens are opening up the heavens are opening over you right now over you over your life over your family right now and God is calling back those wayward sons and daughters God is calling back those that have fallen by the wayside and he's calling them back to his presence. They're calling him back to his glory. 
Hallelujah. He's calling them back to the table at the family of God to sit and dine with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we receive your reign. We, we receive your reign today. to bring evil influence. God is reigning on your family right now. God is literally tearing the roof off of your house, off of your home, and he's reigning in your family right now. Reigning in your home right now. I just sense that in my spirit today. I'm speaking to someone today, someone in this congregation, someone that's listening right now by way of Facebook and YouTube. God is reigning in your home right now. God is reigning. The heavens are open. The roof has been torn away. Lord, let it rain. Let it rain. Come on, everybody, lift your voice and sing it. We receive your rain. We receive your rain. We receive your rain. We receive your rain.
Worship me, for I've created you for this purpose. A time is coming where you may not be able to, but I will pour out my spirit on you and your family, and I will bring you through. I will bring you through the fire. I will bring you through the trials. I am coming for you. Be ready. Thus saith the Lord. time that I thought that I would not ever, there was no chance that I would ever be standing right here. Not because I didn't ever think that I would be a believer or follow Christ, because luckily for me, I had praying grandparents, praying grandparents, and a praying family. But 
And you can be seated, stand up, whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm not going to take too much of your time. I'm just going to flow in, in what direction God wants me to go. But there was a time where I didn't think I would be here. And <laughs> it's funny to say now, but me and Jerry Collins could not stand each other when we first met each other. <laughs> and that, that's just a fact. <laughs> um, I remember... I remember we always used to play basketball on Monday nights at the church, and he'd always go get a loaded up team, run about 10 games straight and kill everybody, and then we'd all go to the house and be mad. So <laughs> so what would happen is, you know, we would get in there and, you know, we'd kind of duke it out a little bit, and I told him one day, I said, look, I said, I'm going to bring a bunch of dudes up here, and we're going to thump you, and we're going to tell you about it, and then we're going to walk off the court. And so I did. I brought the biggest, nastiest football players, probably didn't even know what a basketball was, <laughs> to be there. And, you know, because I would get there and, you know, and Pastor would be running around in circles and he'd be jumping, diving around, and all the rest of that stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> so we'd go up for a rebound and I'd come down and I'd throw in a, a good hard elbow shot on him on his back that he had 100,000 surgeries on and, you know, whatever. He throw that little bit of a backside into me trying to get a rebound. And it just got to a point where it just got built up so bad. And I was like, man, I cannot stand you. So like I said, loaded up a bunch of dudes. And I said, look, we're, we're going to throttle you and we're going to tell you about it. So I did. I did just that. I loaded up a bunch of dudes and I said, look, I said, I don't care if we win. I said, but there will be blood on the court by the time we're done with. I said, I don't care. I said, I, I don't care. They're like, that's a pastor. I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, what? He puts on his pants the same way we do. He just talks to God a whole lot more. <laughs> so we started off, that was our relationship. Like some of the first memories that I have of pastor, I remember one of the first sermons that you preached. It was like kind of your introduction thing. And you go, and I just happened to randomly stumble into church one day because I had to go or else I couldn't go out on Saturday night. So I had to somehow find a way to stumble in. That's what my mom did. She said, you have to be at church on Sunday. At Sunday school as well, which was, it was hard. It was a bit of a stretch. But one of the first things that you said, and I was like, oh, boy, this guy might be a little bit different. He gets up and gets on a mic. He said, I have two daughters and I have a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I was like, man, what, who, what in the world? You know, that, and that has stuck to me to this day. I, I don't know if you guys remember that or not, but that's, that's one of the first things that he said. So I was like, okay, well, can't talk to pastor's daughter. That's okay. So, so, you know, we, we kind of went on and, you know, I would go in and out of church and, you know, kind of do whatever, kind of had him at an arm's length relationship. Hey, what's up, jerk? You know, that kind of deal. And, um. Now, I'm pretty sure the feeling was mutual. I don't think I was wrong in that. You know, I mean, we're two hard-headed dudes with, you know, with with winning to be had. So we fight over everything. So anyways, I moved to Florida, you know, find out that I don't need to live in Florida. And I moved back home. And um, he, uh, you know, I went up to the altar. I remember, you know, I turned my life over to God and. You know, and I was like, oh, man, I'm ready to do this. And still wasn't 100% sure about Pastor, trying to figure him out. But I started hanging out with Stifler. And um, and so me and Todd are, are, you know, got really close and super close. And one day, Pastor comes up to me and he says, he says, hey, man, uh, do you play golf? And I was like, yeah. He was like, do you want to play? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, has he not got anybody else to ask besides me to go play golf? Little did I know he was shooting around the 130, so I don't think anybody else wanted to play with him. But, you know, but I did. I was like, yeah, let's go. I was still working part-time at the time, so during the day, I, I was, you know, pretty free. So I started started playing golf with him. And it was, it was kind of odd at first because you go from having, you know, this, we just say weird relationship and to being stuck in a golf cart with somebody, you know, and then you got to tell them, you, you got to help them find their ball. Half the time, I wouldn't even be looking for his ball. I'm like, nope, that's a stroke. We can't find it. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, my, my dad and pastor love to call me the golf Nazi because I'm 
stickler for the rules. Got to use the rules. But, you know, it's funny because I hear, I hear stories about you guys always calling him the grumpy old man. And I must say, I have never experienced one day that that has not been true. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were super excited. Yeah, thank you, David. Yeah, I'm not a grumpy old man. Yeah, you are, buddy. It's okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I did. I, I mean, look, and that's that's. But what I always thought was cool was, you know, and look, and I'm not. Look, there are plenty of good pastors out there. I just, you know. I had never seen somebody who was not afraid to be a grumpy old man if his tee shot went six inches in front of him. You know, I mean, that was, that was cool to me because when I, when I would read, when I would read my Bible, a lot of times I, it didn't make sense to me. I didn't understand. Nothing was, nothing was clicking. You know, my relationship with Christ was what, what the preacher yelled at me on Sunday morning. And look, I'm, I'm OG. A lot of it was a lot of yelling, <laughs> a lot of yelling. And that's cool. And it, you know, but it, it was very hard for me to understand. So the more I started playing golf with him, we started, you know, kind of started asking him some questions about just life in general, not even about, you know, the Bible, just about life, just about, man, you know, anything. You know, my parents, not getting along with them, not getting along with Morgan. You know, Morgan's going to, she's threatening to kill me again, you know, that sort of situation. But it was always his, his real response to me that always made me want to seek to seek his counsel more about stuff because it just, it, Christianity seemed more like a real thing to me because I saw a real person who struggled with the same things that I struggled with and who, who wanted to see, who wanted to see a real Christianity in the world, which I didn't think that I always saw. Like I said, my parents thank God for my parents but y'all know how it is when your parents tell you stuff when your parents live you don't pay attention to that I, I'm sorry you don't I do now you know I do now but then you know even in my early 20s I was like oh my gosh please get off my back I'm not 12 years old you know yes it, but it, it just it became more of a real a real thing to me it became something that man you know I don't have to worry about, you know, keeping this big checklist of items and all these sort of things. I knew that that I could stumble and it would be okay and I wouldn't be going straight to hell for that. And so, you know, Pastor Appreciation Day is very special to me because I have a very special relationship with you. And, you know, I, a lot of people are like, you know, like, you know, it's like, like, pastor's like a, pastor's like a dad to you, right? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, he is like a brother to me. <laughs> I'm like, he has no problem <laughs> whooping my hind in and whatever he wants to do. <laughs> he has no problem calling me out for whatever he wants. And, my, and, and that's the thing. I'm not telling you guys anything that you guys haven't experienced yourself. And that's what's so cool about this body is the shepherd that we have is as real with me as he is with y'all. Like he doesn't, you know, he didn't ask me to put on a suit this morning. He didn't. I did it because I wanted to show a little respect for the man. So, you know, I might feel like Chris Farley and Tommy Boy right now, but, <laughs> but, you know, you know, but it, <laughs> It, um, but I did it because I respect the man. And there, there's one thing that I, that I was reading that I'm like, man, you know, 
it, it stuck out to me, and it's in John, it's 15, 13. You guys may know the verse. It says, greater love has no one than this than to lay down his life for his friends. And when I read that again, I was like, because, you know, we think, oh, yeah, well, that sounds really good. Because we, we want to use that context of me, family. Like, it's real easy for me to lay down my life for Morgan or for Remy or for Titus or for my parents or for my brother or for my sister. But it's something else when you see your friends, like laying my life down for pastor. He's a friend. There is no blood here that I know of. There is no blood. But I've, I had, <laughs> I thought, and I still think to this day, that if I need a pastor too, he would lay down his life for me. And I would do the same thing for you. And he would do the same thing for all of you. Lay down his life for his friends. I'm sure there have been countless nights where he has been up praying for you guys. He's gotten phone calls at 2 o'clock in the morning. But it is, it is our job to continue to build him up in prayer and continue to reach out and say, hey, you want to go play golf and maybe pay for it a time or two? <laughs> I got you. Maybe pay for it a time or two. Call out and say, hey, you know, look, we got, we've, we've booked a, a reservation to go eat dinner tonight at this fancy restaurant. We can't make it. Y'all go. Or just do it. Hey, we booked a reservation for you. Go. Whatever you need done, we need to take it. We'll go cut your grass. We'll go do whatever. It's, it's our job to step up and continue to, to, to build him up. And I think that's what today, because, you know, it's, it's, kinda, it's kind of a struggle. You know, it's like it's Pastor Appreciation Day. What in the world am I supposed to do? Like, never done Pastor Appreciation Day before. You might not ask me to do it again. Or, Todd, where you at? <laughs> might not ask me to do it again. <laughs> but the more I thought about it, the more I, this is a time for us to build him up. And to, 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 to raise his family up. You know, I, I'm sure there are plenty of times where Michelle is like, really, you're going to play another round of golf with Turpin again? How much counseling does he need? <laughs> and it was a lot. <laughs> Usually about three rounds a week at least. <laughs> but, you know, she's like, yeah, it's, it's Turpin. Go. You know, go, go hang out with him. I'm sure he's done something crazy again. I mean, how many times? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get him out of the house. What crazy, I'm sure, and then sometimes I'm sure she would sit there and be like, well, what crazy shenanigan did Turpin do this time? Because, I mean, there's been a lot of them, you know, whether it be hitting a dude on a moped at, you know, around 10 o'clock. You were at my parents' house for that. <laughs> Called my dad and. Pastor Michelle at my parents' house. Hey, David, what'd you do? Oh, I hit a dude on a moped. You did what? <laughs> I didn't see him. <laughs> All I saw was a little red light on his moped about that big going like that. <laughs> and I was like, well, is that dude got a little flashlight? What is <laughs> I see you. No, I hit him. <laughs> you know, well, <laughs> there's other times that, you know, some other things happen, and I called, and Pastor, a lot of times, yeah, that's what you do. You just give that little chuckle. <laughs> Be like, yeah, all right, Turpin, yeah, okay. <laughs> but we need, to, we need to remember those times we need to build him up, and we need to pray for him. We need to pray for all of them because he's a man of God. So guess what happens? Michelle gets attacked. That's going to happen. Amber's going to get attacked. That's going to happen. Jordan's going to get attacked. That's going to happen. That's guaranteed. He's got, in, you know, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure the enemy has sent a lot after you and your family. I can only imagine. So that means more prayer, more reaching out, more saying, hey, we got your back. And this is a day of reminder for us on what we need to be as, as a congregation, as sheep. I would follow you anywhere. I would follow you through the fires of hell if I got to. But it's not because of you. It's because of who you follow. 
And I appreciate that as much as anybody can. There's no, like I said, my mama gets me in a suit and that's about it. But today, of all days, it's just a time to remember for us as a, as a member of this body on what our job is to help him out as much as he's helped every one of us out. So, Pastor, I'm going to uh, ask you to come up here, if you don't mind. I keep looking at you. It keeps reminding me of Santa Claus. And then I just... I, I, well, and I just, I mean, you know, the mask matches your hair, so it's okay. It's just that it's, you know, you got white hair. Hey, uh, fat and happy, baby. Hey, my dad, hey, look, now, now, look, my dad told me when I was younger, he said, thin may be in, but fat is where it's at. So, I, amen. look, amen, thank you. I'm just saying. So, you know, like I said, it's that's a that's the book of herb. <laughs> so, if everybody wants to stand up, we're gonna. so thankful to be able to call you guys my friends more than anything else more than pastor and pastor's wife you know, I remember one time I called you sister Collins and I thought oh lord have mercy <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's my mother-in-law but you know I didn't really know what to call you I didn't have a relationship with you but now I mean you know I like to think I'm up to favorite son status so yeah <laughs> put on a suit it happens brother it's okay but I I am very appreciative of everything that you guys have done for me and done for Morgan and done for my family and all the times that you prayed for my parents and all the times that you sit there and listen to me cry and complain about my parents and the situation that happened and I there's no way that I, there's no way that I would be here if, if it wasn't for you stepping up and doing that and that's both y'all your words of wisdom have meant just as much to me as his. He says a lot, not all of it's wise, but it's okay. I'm just joking. Yeah. So what I want us to do is everybody stretch their hands forward. And we're gonna we're gonna pray a hedge around them, a hedge of protection for them, for their family, for their families' families. That whatever happens. Whatever happens, if they aren't strong enough to handle it, they know who is. Father God, I thank you for, I thank you for this for this family that you've given us, Father, to to guide and direct us and to show us show us who you are, who you really are, not some pomp and circumstance God, but a but a nitty gritty get down in the mud and help people out, God. I thank you that, that you continue to guide and direct them, Father, even, even, if they, they don't, even if they don't see it themselves. We know that you have your hand on their life. We know that you have your hand on their family's lives, Father God. I just pray right now that, that you continue to, to use them in this area, in this community, Father, and continue to, to show them opportunities outside of our local body to, to show who you are, Father, the light that we get to see and the light that the world sees, Father. I just pray that that right now, that even in this in this chaotic time that has been 2020, that we come out of it, we come out of it stronger, we come out of it more refreshed, we come out of it ready to go, Father, because we know that your your time is near, that you're coming, Father God. We know that, that you're building up an army to take on to take on those spiritual battles Father God and we know that you will need people to step up and fill in the gaps Father and I pray right now that you continue to help Pastor and Michelle to 
build those discipleships up and stand in those gaps so that we can so that we can push forward, Father God, so that we can fill up heaven with as many people as we can get, Father God. I just pray right now that, that you continue to strengthen their relationship and continue to show them ways that they can better understand each other and better ways that they can minister toward each other, Father. And even when they feel alone, let them know that they're not. That there's always somebody who has their back. There's always somebody who's praying for them. There's always somebody who's going to be there to feed them. Father, we love this family. We lift them to you. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Love you. Just remember, we have, a, we have a role to play in their ministry. So play it. Pray. Call them. Feed them. Pastor really likes banana pudding. So there are uh, there are some baskets in the back, <clears throat> and uh, like I said, I I just want to thank you for myself for you guys always reaching out and helping me and Morgan out, looking out after us. So that being said, we love you, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Pastor will be back. He's he's uh, negative.